Oh yeah. Oh yeah, baby. Mm hmm. Bruh, bruh. Good Friday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. Uh, it's pouring down rain out here. Something is definitely needed where I am, and I'm probably probably where you are too, because we've got all kinds of forest fires. Nothing like they have on the West Coast, but on the Shindo Valley, it's been a tinderbox, and this rain definitely is gonna help. Definitely gonna help the plants and everything else out there. And our Dallas Cowboys, we get a much needed game against a team that is truly a wounded animal and um micah parsons had a message let me go back down and say exactly what micah parsons message was here to his teammates because we know how the cowboys sometimes have a tendency to play down to their competition right now we're talking about not danny devito but uh rookie devito might as well have Danny DeVito starting for the New York Giants. The team seems to be in shambles. So much for the coach of the year last year. Things change quickly in the NFL. The New York Giants are terrible and are fighting for one of those top picks in the NFL draft. But Micah Parsons' message is never overlook an opponent. Flat out. Don't overlook anybody. And if the Arizona Cardinals aren't the perfect example of just that then i don't know what to say to you guys because it's the truth never overlook anybody in the nfl so yes we have the new york giants we are the biggest point spread uh this year 15 and a half points i believe it is um it may have gone up even more than that and if the cowboys don't take care of business at home against this guys then we don't deserve to be in the conversation of playoffs or if we can turn things around in essence though we had a great conversation last night watching a terrible game carolina versus the bears uh, the great thing to look at that is the next opponent we have is not real good too and this is a chance for the dallas cowboys to hopefully get in get a lead get people off the field, get some work in for some of the younger guys and keep on chomping at it. You know, my man game time who decided to try and piss me off last night. He believes that the Cowboys are going to go on a five game win streak. All of a sudden, if the Cowboys were 10 and three, you'd have to talk a little differently about them. Of course, we'll hear they can't beat any winning opponents and so on, yada, yada, yada. But, you know, 10 wins in the NFL would be 10 wins, and that would be something that the Cowboys have not done. Having double-digit wins in playoffs three years in a row, no matter what you say about Mike McCarthy and Dak Prescott. But the thing that drives me crazy is, as I, I, I said last night, because I was sitting here after um, – Brian kind of ticked me off about Dak Prescott. You know, well, we need to get Dak. And I said, you know, I said, when you look at other teams and see what they've done to help the teams get better, I just think about some of the smaller things that this team could have done. When we've had players that say, I want to play with the Cowboys. I want to play with the Cowboys. A guy like Hopkins. Hopkins took it personal that we ended up not. He was literally here working out saying, hello, I'd like to play with you guys. His cap number this year is less than $4 million. <clears throat> Excuse me. You think about a guy like Bobby Wagner, who two years ago, <clears throat> a lot of people said was old. Fifth in the league right now in tackles. You don't think we could use a Bobby Wagner right now? Another guy who we had an inside track for. Inside track with Dan Quinn, who wanted to be here, was looking for a new home. Cowboys, nah, too much. I think his cap number this year is about five and a half million dollars. And we sign our own guys when they're injured and think and expect them to come back from the injury immediately, even though they're not able to practice in training camp. Here's a here's a good thing. Here's an idea for you. Cowboys, 
if you are going to have a guy who is not going to be ready to start training camp because of an injury, especially an ACL, how about you wait before you do a long-term deal and see how it comes through? I'm just saying, the Cowboys in this, you know, we want to bargain. You know, we, we got Michael Gallup under contract long term, fifty four million dollars, you know, for four years. You know, he, he's less than the current rate for most wide receivers. Yeah, but he's not the same guy he was. He has actually become a liability. You can look at Jalen Tolbert, who has the highest success rate on the Cowboys and say that guy needs to be on the field more than Michael Gallup at this point. And Terrence Steele, I'm sure Terrence Steele will get better as time goes on. But the problem is, is if you're injured and coming back from injury, you're pushing to get back on the field. And once you get back on the field, you're not really healing. You're basically maintaining. And so that's the problem. Your body still does not have time to get stronger in during the season and get better situated and then doubt starts to get in so i don't know that terrence Steele is going to be much better you know he's played good in spots and granted he was playing against one of the best in football but i'm not sure he's going to get much better and this is the poor planning and stuff with the cowboys if the cowboys had signed bobby wagner and hopkins this year there's no way in the world that you're going to tell me that this team isn't a super bowl favorite just two players. Just two players and $8 million. But the Cowboys, the same guys that will tell you that um, we believe in our guys, that also believed in Johnny Manziel and Paxton Lynch and Connor Cook and guys like that, they're the same ones that tell you we believe in the guys that we have. Well, I hate to tell you, the guys you have haven't been winning those Super Bowls. I hate to tell you, that the teams that are winning Super Bowls are constantly trying to add more firepower. Don't get me wrong. We do great things for the draft, just not this year so far. And it may pan out down the road, but right now, we didn't get a bump from our rookie class. Mozzie doesn't get on the field much. Schoonmaker was injured in training camp and is just beginning to get on the field. But the bright spot of our rookie class would be our kicker. And this is where the Cowboys have to recognize we need to do more than what we are if we're really trying to get a Super Bowl. And if you're not, just say to us fans, hey, listen, guys, we want to be popular. We want to compete. We want to be a playoff team, but we're not going to do enough to really compete for that Super Bowl. Just not. And that's where we are. All righty, so we'll see what we hear from practice today. We don't know if Micah, excuse me, Micah, we don't know if Tyron Smith is going to be practicing. That's one of the ideas that they have right now that Micah, part, I mean, that Tyron Smith may just not practice anymore. He'll just show up on game days to play. Um, and if that works, I'm okay with that. Keep him on bubble wrap. In fact, I look at the game like this and say, this isn't a good opportunity to say, let's get some younger guys some work. I would look at just sitting him on the next couple of weeks and get him ready for Philadelphia and the, the main stretch. But I'm not the coach of the Cowboys. Now, Brandon Cooks. Brandon Cooks, I think Brandon Cooks needs to pull a CD lamp where he basically kind of, you know, gets ticked off. Now, I've been trying to give Mike McCarthy the benefit of the doubt and saying that we're working on the Texas Toast uh, offense and that we're, you know, not trying to put it all out at one time, that we're, you know, building up to this so that way we'll have something new for defenses to have to study as the season goes on and then eventually, boom, because you looked at it for a while there, was like, okay, we weren't using C.D. Lamb. Now, we're using C.D. Lamb and teams are now saying, we got to stop uh, C.D. Lamb. Right now, you go ahead and hit them. You set them up with CD. Now they're going to be trying to stop CD. You know, then you start hitting them with Jake Ferguson. Okay, you know uh, Jake Ferguson. So now teams are worried about CD and Jake. Now maybe you hit them with the Brandon Cooks. So now they've been worrying and studying CD and Jake Ferguson. Then they got to start studying Brandon Cooks. And after Brandon Cooks. 
then maybe you start saying, you know, we're going to work on Tony Pollard. Oh. Hmm. Must be doing some cooking in the kitchen here. It'll go off in a second here. Our, our smoke detectors are very, very sensitive. Very sensitive. And you have to have the exhaust fan on. All right. So fire alarm here. So maybe that is the idea. And of course, Brian says, no, Mike McCarthy is just an idiot. But I actually kind of see the offense has been um, evolving, so to speak. And maybe this is the case of where we are, that we're constantly evolving. And it's taking time also, too, for the players to get in there. I can't believe that we're not going to use Brandon Cooks more than we are. Um, and I almost wonder, too, with the Cowboys, you know, one thing that Jerry Jones does not like is to be wrong. And that's where or, you know, not given credit. And that may be part of the reason why they're stubborn as far as Michael Gallup is. They say we paid all that money and we're going to make sure that it looks like we, we, we got a value for what we did. In the end, sometimes trying to prove that you're right just makes you more wrong. And this is where you have to recognize maybe we made a mistake and what can we do to fix it? And you could look at this and say the Cowboys you know, shout out to the Eagles that are eight and one. You know, they're winning and doing things and constantly bringing in people. But as you look at the landscape right now and the rankings of teams and what they're doing, you know, as Jerry said about the 49ers, he feels like they can be had. I feel like everybody out there could be had. But you've got to have enough firepower to do it. So I want to end this morning with uh, Rich Eisen, his power rankings here, and um, see where they put the Cowboys. For some reason, it seems like people think that the Cowboys weren't so bad after all um, with the game we just had. Let's listen to Rich. All right, here we go. Lots of uh, lots of action in week number nine. Um, there's, uh, let me see, we count five no changes and five one new, new changes. one on the list. And let's get to the new one right away. Okay. Uh, I have been, uh, I've been holding off on this. I've been Braveheart holding. Um, and they keep charging. They keep charging with this defense and uh, a running game that uh, keeps on chugging despite the injuries that, uh, that have uh, beset it. I'm putting the Cleveland Browns on my uh, on my power rankings list oh, for the first time. They're now currently ranked tenth. Uh, Miles Garrett, is just the Browns, five complete. and three, same record uh, as us. Amari Cooper. I'm sorry, TJ. Uh, how much dumbest thing in the world if they held on to him? Oh. Obviously, the Browns don't care talking about that. But the defense, if Deshaun Watson can actually start staying healthy and get better and get back anywhere near the realm of his Texans tenure. This is going to be a very difficult team to face. And them versus the Ravens this week, I'm all in on this one. This is going to be great. Number 10 on my list are the Browns. Number 9, I just can't quit them. I can't quit them despite the number of times that they've been blown out lately. They're down two spots. I'm putting the Seattle Seahawks. I'm keeping them on Come this on. list right now. Why? I hear you. I hear you. Why? Because they got have a really good defense and a really good running game. Mm. They got a really they good, good defense. Good they gave up 37 points. I know, because look, man, the Lions are still on this list, too. I think we're learning how good the Ravens are, and that if you go to their house, you're going to get blown out, you know? And that's why I can't wait to see the Bengals in Baltimore uh, in a couple of Thursday nights. So uh, mm -hmm. proof will be in the pudding right there. But uh, the Seahawks are still one of the best teams in the NFC. I still think they make the playoffs. I know that Geno Smith hasn't played, played well of late. Everybody's got flaws. It up to a speed bump or two for him. I really like this defense. I really do. Even they though they got 35? I get, I get it. They're still on my list. And they're above the Browns because they beat them a couple weeks ago. Down four spots. I can't take the Dolphins out of my top ten. They have one of the best offenses in the league, despite obviously running into some trouble against the best defenses in the league. Their defense is really good. They, they kept the Chiefs, uh, they kept themselves in a game against the Chiefs when the Chiefs defense was marauding. And as a matter of fact, the margin of difference was a Chiefs takeaway on that lateral that was insane. And I still can't believe I saw that in my own two eyes and I got a chance to call that. 
for nine million plus people. I saw that number too. Dolphins down four spots. They're number eight on my power rankings list. Up one spot, seventh ranked yeah. Lions. I'm keeping the Lions. Lions pretty much right where I've kept them. They're going to get David Montgomery back. I really love this team. I think that they're going to win this division despite Josh Dobbs doing what he recently did. They're up one spot. And now a bunch of no changes. I'm keeping the Cowboys right where they were, sixth. Even though they lost this game against Philadelphia, Philadelphia, you'll find out where I, I place them in my power Ooh, rankings. Cowboys are six. Huh? I'm huh. above the Lions. I still think that right now, I went back and forth. Do I think the Lions are going to win that game? I think it's one of those, I don't know. We're going to find out later in the year. But right now, this is where I kept them because they were just, you know, one silly exchange uh, of you know mm-hmm. uh, uh, of time management away of beating uh, the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm keeping wow. the Jaguars no change at five coming off the at bye week. I really Jags at five. Mm, I think that's going to be an interesting one with uh, um, I San know Francisco. We're going to have um, uh, a half season awards. I'm thinking of putting Doug Peterson as my coach of the year right now. Um, I, I'm really toying with that idea. That's where I, I, I place the Jaguars at five. Up Thank five you. spots. The biggest movers on this list. I'm putting the Cincinnati Bengals right here. Oh. Bengals at four. Yeah, wow. I'm, I'm popping it. them up. And I'm, I'm going for it. They are too. As you said on our overreaction Monday pod, healthy Joe Burrow is the best quarterback in the league. I said that that was not an overreaction. The defense is balling out. Now T. Higgins is coming. Like, now guys are beginning to really crop up one by one on this team. With Burrow being healthy, it just makes the difference. And then the rest are no changes. I'm keeping the Chiefs right there at three after what they did right here in Germany. The Kansas City Chiefs coming off their win against the uh, Miami Dolphins. Then I'm keeping the Ravens right where they are at two. And then still at number one, the only team uh, with eight wins right now in the NFL, the Philadelphia Eagles. And that, from Berlin, Germany, are my power rankings. Um, And in case you're wondering, the Buffalo Bills have fallen off the list. Uh, Mm. The Bills have dropped out. Wow. The The Bills have dropped out. And that's with a game-changing Game changing, of course, quarterback in Josh Allen. Hmm. Wow. Kind of crazy. Well, that's the way it is sometimes. All right, good people. I hope everybody has a great day. We'll be live streaming tonight here from the Red Brick House at um, 9 o'clock Eastern. We'll be keeping up all the news that is the Dallas Cowboys. And as always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Peace out.